Hi everyone and welcome to the third video in our particle editor series for the new Babylon JS 4.2. Today we're going to talk about how you can integrate your particle system in the environment and the scene. So let's dive in. All right, remember our uh, cool effect that we created last time. I just tweak it a little bit to make it even more beautiful. And today I would like to um, talk about where this particle system is in the world. By default here, you can see that the particle system lives at a very specific coordinate, a vector three, and you can play with it like by changing the value and you see that it's moving. And it's not moving like immediately, it's moving smoothly because the current particle will just slowly die where they are, living their life, and the new one will be uh, emitted from the new position, okay? So when you move like that, you can see that the particle will just flow through one position to the other, right? Even more better than that, there's something I love, it's the fact that you can attach a particle system to a mesh in the scene. So here I have only my sphere, I'm going to attach it to the sphere, and look at that, I'm going to be able to pick my um, sphere here, and move it around and look at that. How cool is that? It's very cool. We, we have a very smooth animation here of the particle moving with your mesh. So if you animate your mesh, if you attach your mesh to something in the scene, the particle system will just follow like that, right? Pretty cool. All right. Um, now I would like to also say that the emit position, like where the particles are emitted from, uh, and there is another option to mention, which is you can also say the particle system will be emitted through a volume, a, um, a shape, right? Here, the shape of the emission is a cone, okay? But you can decide it's actually a box, or it's actually a sphere, or it's actually a mesh itself. So let's say I'm, this time I'm going to have a sphere that will be used to emit the uh, particles. The particle will go through the surface of your mesh. It could be whatever you want. That's the trick we use, for instance, for the weapons video we did for the 4.1 release, when you have uh, the knife, and the knife is animated with particles flowing through the shape of the mesh, and that's because, or thanks to the mesh emitter mode, where you can say, okay, let's pick the face of my mesh and emit particles from the surface of your object, all right? So that's pretty powerful, and obviously it could be any kind of mesh. Don't use too um, complicated mesh, obviously, because then every time you add complexity, it's just going to be a little bit slower. Speaking of, slow, of slowness, uh, one of the things I want to mention as well today is the difference between the CPU particle system and the GPU particle system. So let me add a GPU particle system as well, and I'm going to actually stop this little guy here and dispose it. So we're going to just have a um, GPU particle system, all right? I'm going to attach it to the sphere. So visually, there are not that much difference. The main difference is in how it works. CPU particle will animate the particles on the CPU and render them on the GPU. So let's say you have 10,000 uh, particles, then the system will have the CPU, will have to go through the entire list of particles, okay? on the CPU side, and then render them using the GPU. It could be slow, it could be slow. Let's say you go crazy, you have uh, 100,000 particles, then the CPU will definitely suffer. On the other hand, the GPU is made for that. So GPU particles are a very cool feature of BabylonJS where you can say, okay, now all my particle system will work, but using shaders only. So you can go crazy, you can have 1 million particles, it should work around 60 frames per second. There are some caveats with that. First, it's only working on WebGL2 because it's using a specific feature of WebGL2, which is kind of okay right now. Only iOS uh, and um, uh, Safari will have a problem with that, but Apple is working on uh, porting WebGL2 to um, iOS and Safari, so it should not be a problem for too long. That being said, there are also other caveats. Like for instance, remember last time we mentioned the gradients. Gradients let you define a couple of value at different lifetime of a particle, that, and then the system will pick a random value between these two values depending on when it is in the lifetime of the particle, that will not work with the GPU. The GPU will only have the opportunity to pay, take one value. Like, you're going to say it's going to be red at 0% uh, of the lifetime, then of the lifetime, then uh, green at 50%. It will not be between red and blue, etc., etc. That's one of the constraints, okay? But 
With this constraint, you get a lot of power. Like here, we are animating, just as we talk, the system is animating 3,000 particles. Let's just bump that a little bit to the maximum of the capacity of the, this current system, which was created with 10,000 as a maximum. Uh, let's use a sphere to emit the shape, okay? And we're gonna a little bit play with the lifetime, for instance, so we're gonna see a little bit more people around. Sorry, not one, but two. Okay, so we're gonna have more particles flowing. So that's 10,000 particles living just before your eyes. And we're gonna add a bit of color as well, just to distinguish them a little bit more. And we're gonna make it a little bit more beautiful by making them die with a black color. See, that's a amazing amount of particles that are all animated by the GPU. So your CPU is like, okay, I'm fine. I don't have a lot to do because animation and rendering is done on GPU. So you have both opportunities on Babylon JS. Just check the documentation to make sure that if you are using GPU, you will not um, need to use some features that are only available on CPU. Thank you very much, everyone. See you next time.